I found five of the best online businesses to start as a beginner in 2024. So if you're someone who's been thinking about starting an online business, but you're not sure which one to start, you came to the right place because I have many different friends who started online businesses. I'm also a part of different organizations with over a thousand business owners. And it's pretty easy for me to see which online businesses have a lot of success and which ones are incredibly difficult to break into. So if you appreciate me doing these types of videos, let me know by gently tapping that like button. And let's jump into it with number one on the list, which is going to be a high ticket remote setter business or a high ticket remote closer business. Now, this is basically a sales type role. And this is where you would either be a setter, which is usually someone who makes the initial contact with a lead or a closer, which is someone who actually sells the product or the service to them. Now, there's pros and cons of being a setter or a closer. Closers tend to make more money. However, it's harder to get into and it also requires a high level of skill, whereas setter doesn't make as much money, but it's much easier to learn and it's much easier to land a job. Now you might be thinking, Shane, I clicked on this video to learn how to do an online business. Why are you talking about something that I could get a job with? Well, to be honest with you, going from zero experience to starting a business is incredibly difficult. And if you look at the number one career path that millionaires and billionaires have in common, it's almost always sales. Sales is kind of like the gateway drug, so to speak, between being an employee and being a business owner. And there are actually a lot of positions out there there where you'd be what's known as a growth partner. And in that case, you would be an entrepreneur, you would own your own business, but you'd still be doing a sales role. Now, honestly, there's so many different industries that you can get sales roles in. Some of my favorite ones are gonna be the info product industry. And this is basically where you sell either high ticket coaching or masterminds to people. I myself have purchased tons of these types of products before when I wanna learn a skill, but I wanna save a lot of time and effort. I'll basically just go to someone who I 100% know does have that skill. And they also have a coaching program with a course and feedback. So that way I know I can learn the skill like 10 times faster. Another really good one is going to be the solar industry. Another good one is the insurance industry. And then one of my favorites is the software industry. And this would be what's known as tech sales. Now, very generally speaking, appointment setters usually make somewhere between five to 10 K per month. And then high ticket closers are going to be making more like 10 to 15 K per month. And the reason you're able to make so much money is because you get paid mostly based on commission. So for appointment setters, for instance, if you make the initial contact with a good lead and they end up buying the product, you're probably going to get paid somewhere between three and eight percent of the sale. Now, this varies a lot depending on the industry you're in. So I'm just speaking very generally here. And then for a high ticket closer position, you're likely going to get paid between 10 and 20 percent of the sale. So yeah, sales is an incredible skill to learn. Even if you end up not doing sales for very long, I recommend that everybody does this job at least one time in their life because it basically reprograms your brain to think in a different way, right? You start thinking about what does the other person want, not what you want? What does the other person want? Because the only way to get good at sales is to have the emotional intelligence to realize that the other person wants something and you need to connect your product to that thing that they want, right? Your product needs to solve their problems. And that just completely changes your paradigm of thinking. And that's why so many salespeople go on to start successful businesses. So I really like this one. I only gave two of them on this list a 10 out of 10 opportunity score, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 10 out of 10 opportunity score. It's phenomenal. Next is going to be a social media marketing agency. Now you've probably seen this one a million times before. I think Ty Lopez was the first one to start talking about SMMAs. Lately, the king of SMMA is Iman Godzi. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this one is hard to break into. And even if you're able to break into it and you have a successful SMMA, making like 10K per month, for instance, it is incredibly stressful. Now, I did this one myself before. I actually bought Ty Lopez's course back in the day, funny enough, and it was okay. You know, I'm, I'm not a hater, right? It was an all right course, I learned the basics, but it definitely wasn't enough for me to get success in SMMA. I had to learn a lot more beyond the course. And I did eventually get some success and what I found is I absolutely hated it. I hated having to answer the phone when I'm out with my friends or on a date or something like that. And the client needs me to change something on their website or change something about the funnel, right? You're basically at your client's beck and call. And if you don't serve them, they will just simply fire you. However, I do have to say that starting an SMMA business is going to teach you the fundamentals of business, right? So many business owners that I know, their first ever business that they tried was an agency 
agency style business, similar to an SMMA. And the reason for that is because it's much easier to sell somebody a product or a service that's known as done for you, right? So when you're selling products or services, it's typically going to be a done for you, a done with you, or just some sort of information type product like a course. And if you think about it from the buyer's perspective, let's say you are advertising to real estate agents and you're teaching them how to get leads. They are incredibly busy and it's much easier to sell them a done for you product than a done with you product or a course because real estate agents don't have time to go through a course and they don't have time to go through coaching because coaching is typically done with you. They just want someone to take care of the problem for them. And that's why it's so much easier to sell service-based offers than it is to sell like a coaching program or a course. But with that being said, it is a lot of work. Now, what people typically do is they will start off in an agency type model where they're just doing it for them, right? So it's done for you. And then after they get some experience, after they figure out how to actually get the client results, they will quickly transition into a done with you model because done for you is incredibly difficult and very stressful. And it's very hard hard to scale. However, done with you or some sort of more automated type of model is much easier, usually much more attractive, and you can actually scale it, right? I can't tell you how many like SMMA gurus that I've seen have transitioned into doing a done with you coaching type offer. Or if they stay with the SMMA model, they'll usually only work with businesses that give them a percentage of the profit or a percentage of the revenue. So yeah, SMMA, it is a good opportunity. You're probably not gonna get results just buying a course, but a course can be a good investment in some cases just to learn the basics faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, if you wanna get paid to learn how to do digital marketing, which is probably what you'd be doing if you do SMMA, you can also just get a job as a digital marketer. And this is kind of just a shortcut in learning how to do SMMA. And my friend Seth has taught literally thousands of people how to get jobs as digital marketers, and I've interviewed a bunch of them on this channel. For instance, Kenneth actually dropped out of college because he didn't like the career path that he was going down, and he was able to quickly secure a digital marketing job, and within a short period of time, he was making $90,000 a year, and he was getting paid to learn in-demand skills. So Seth actually offers a free masterclass, which explains exactly what digital marketing is and whether or not it's a good fit for you, and you can check that out by clicking down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Low. Next, let's talk about a freelance writing agency. Now, there's a lot of different types of freelance writing you can do. For instance, you could be a freelance writer that focuses on SEO or search engine optimization. And that's where you write articles that are good in terms of the content, but they're also search engine optimized so that they're gonna be easily found when people search certain keywords on a search engine such as Google. Now you can get hired as a freelancer doing this. It's actually relatively easy to do that. Or you could just go ahead and start an agency. Now. The key here, what is incredibly important is that you niche down, right? You cannot just be a generalist writer because there is no writer out there that knows a lot about everything. Nobody knows a lot about everything. No one is an expert on everything out there. However, you can be an expert on one thing and it's actually not that hard to get to that level of being an expert if you just focus on one thing. So for instance, if you were going to start a freelance writing agency, I would highly recommend doing it for something like e-commerce, maybe becoming an expert on SaaS, which is software as a service, or becoming an expert on the info product industry. And you can see this guy, for instance, makes $27,000 a month with his writing agency. Now, is that typical? No, most people fail in business. I failed probably about six or seven times before I finally found something that worked for me. That is the risk you are taking as an entrepreneur. The word itself, entrepreneur, means somebody who takes risk, right? If it wasn't risky, then it wouldn't be business. However, entrepreneurship is smart risk because the benefit of being able to start a business outweigh the risk. And chances are you are going to fail your first few times starting a business, but if you keep going, you're gonna find the right business model for you that matches your personality and you will eventually succeed. I just wanna set realistic expectations here because most people on the internet set unrealistic expectations because they are marketing to you. Getting a job is much easier than starting a business. However, if you're able to start a successful business, it's quite a bit better than a job for a lot of people out there because it's going to give you time, location, and financial independence. So yeah, freelance writing agency, really good one. I know a lot of people 
out there that are crushing it with this. A lot of them are working in SEO. You could also just go ahead and start your own blog as well. I'm gonna give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next on the list is going to be my personal favorite and that is starting a YouTube channel. Now, you might have noticed recently that a bunch of people who are already successful have been starting YouTube channels. Anything from Hollywood stars to athletes to billionaires like the guys who started the All In podcast. And there's a reason for that. When the smartest, most successful people in the world that are probably already crazy busy are taking time out of their day to start YouTube channels, that should get your attention. And it's because YouTube is an incredibly massive opportunity. Now, now, some YouTubers actually have income reports that they put on their channel, and they're very transparent about sharing that information. And you should honestly appreciate that. For instance, I'm transparent about how much I make on this channel. I don't say exactly how much I make, but it's over six figures a month. And I know people out there that are crushing it 10 or 20 times more than I am. And you'd be surprised because some of the highest earning YouTubers actually aren't that big. If you pick the right niche, you can make millions of dollars a year with a channel with less than 10,000 subscribers. For instance, Charlie Morgan only has about 20 to 30,000 subscribers, and he makes over a million dollars a month, and most of his revenue comes from YouTube. But yeah, starting a YouTube channel, in my opinion, is the absolute best opportunity of 2024. It has never been easier to make money on YouTube. And you see people that are really big on Instagram or TikTok and all these other social media platforms, and they all want to migrate to YouTube, and there's a reason for that. And that's because YouTube is where the money is. It is easier to make money on YouTube than any other platform. So this one gets a perfect 10 out of 10 opportunity score as well. Finally, I'm gonna talk about a type of digital marketing, which is affiliate marketing. Now, this is another one where a lot of people out there kind of market this one and they just talk about it all the time. And this is really marketed to beginners because it just sounds so good in theory, right? You don't have to create your own product. You don't have to create your own company. You just take an existing product Product that's already crushing it and you just drive people to that product and then you get a certain percentage of the sale. Now it sounds great in theory, but the only problem is driving people to the product is one of the hardest things to do. And so I do love affiliate marketing, but you typically have to pair it with a different type of business model. For instance, you could start a YouTube channel and then do affiliate marketing, or you could start a blog and then do affiliate marketing. But honestly, the simplicity of affiliate marketing where you literally just have to focus on one skill, which is traffic generation, is what makes it one of the absolute best business opportunities. Right, so you just focus on that one skill, which is getting attention, getting traffic, and then the company takes care of literally everything else. Whereas if you start a full-blown business, you have to pay attention to traffic generation, then you have to pay attention to lead generation, then you have to nurture the leads, then you have to have a marketing and sales process, and you have to create a product that people actually want. Then once people buy it, you have to make sure that the product is good. So there's a ton of different steps when it comes to starting a business and you have to be relatively good at all of them. Whereas with affiliate marketing, you just have to be good at traffic generation and that's all. So it really is one of the easiest business models with the caveat that you have to pair it with a different business model. And usually that different business model is going to involve traffic generation. So yeah, absolutely love affiliate marketing. Um, it's one of the main ways that I make money as well. It's something I also cover with my YouTube coaching because the difference between a really good affiliate partner and a bad affiliate partner can be like night and day, right? You get a bad affiliate partner, you're not gonna make any money. You get a good affiliate partner, you're gonna make like 30, $50,000 a month. So yeah, affiliate marketing is great, but you do have to pair it with another business model that involves traffic generation. I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. So yeah, these are literally my five biggest recommendations for beginners on the types of businesses that they should start. If I could go back in time and start these businesses, I would honestly start a YouTube business with the knowledge that I have now, but just taking a complete beginner where I'm not really sure what their personality is and what they're going to be good at. And I'd want to start them in different business models. These would be the five that I would look at. Now there's other business models out there that are amazing. For instance, starting a software business like a SaaS is incredible, but it's not very beginner friendly. There's just way too many skill sets that you have to have to be successful starting a SaaS. These are the five that would give you the best chance, the best opportunity 
opportunity to be successful as a beginner. And even with that being said, you are very likely going to fail your first few tries. And the reason you're gonna fail isn't necessarily because you aren't good, but in many cases, it's just gonna be because the business model doesn't fit your personality. For instance, I tried Amazon FBA and shipping physical products online. And honestly, at the time I tried it, I probably could have been successful with it, but it just didn't fit my personality. I absolutely hated having to source products and deal with manufacturers and doing hours and hours and hours of product research. It was just so boring to me. You know, having to deal with inventory and logistics, and it's just like such a headache. It was so boring. Whereas other people, that might be their forte. They might absolutely love that. So the best thing to do is to just get started. And eventually, if you don't give up, you'll find the right one for you. And by the way, if you don't want to start a business and instead you just want to get a high paying remote job, I did actually make a video that went viral and that's the 21 highest paying work from home jobs. And you can check that out by clicking right here.